In the last video, I covered how you can find messages in the Signal Messenger stored in memory. But now these messages are being accessed whenever a message is sent, received, displayed or retrieved from the database. This is very important because the message usage can be traced back. So when we know there is a message and it's being somehow processed, then this comes from somewhere else and we can backtrace this. And with a backtrace, you can see all the functions called in the same thread until back when the thread started. So we could now see how the program flow works, even if we don't have source code access. The signal source code is very, very huge. If you check out just the latest version, you will see it's 109 megabytes without any commit history. Otherwise you have a gigabyte and it's more than 4,000 files just for a messenger. That's not just a few sticker packs or something, but that's really a lot going on in the code. And it's hard to understand such a huge code base. So of course you can now read this and just spend a lot of time, but also something that works for closed source apps is that you can make a backtrace. The syntax for Frida is a bit complex, so you can say thread.backtrace, which generates a backtrace. You have to tell it this dot context, so the context, which is the current thread, so it knows in which thread the backtrace takes place. And you can tell it backtracer.accurate, so that it knows which kind of backtracer type it's using. And you can also map this because otherwise you would just get a list of addresses, but you can map it to a debug symbol from Frida and Frida will resolve this, for example, if something is an Objective-C method or if something is defined as a C, C++ export in a library, it will add the name. And this will make it very readable, even without any source code access. Here's a view on the disassemble TS message in the Signal Service Kit. Gitra manages to resolve all the symbols and you can also see that in the assembly you have all the function names. But on the left hand side, you can see the addresses. So without any symbol resolving, all we would get in a backtrace would be those addresses. And also there is ASLR, which randomizes the addresses and shifts them. So that is also something that Frida is compensating for when assigning the symbols and the libraries. On the right hand side in Gitra, you can even see cross references. That's similar to one step in a backtrace. However, it might be different. For example, it might fail to statically resolve all the references. So what you see during runtime might be different and have additional references, but there might also be references that you do not manage to call during your traceback in the practical experiment. Now let's do the traceback with the Frida script. And now when I start typing, you can already see that there is something going on. Right now, messages mostly seem to be null and not initialized, but you can see something very IOS typical. So for example, the TS message here, that's where we start, but it goes back to the lib dispatch, which is where a new thread starts and then back to the lib system P thread. So we cannot go any further back with the backtrace because then we have a different thread. And now when I send a message, I can actually see this one and it's being used in a lot of different contexts. So you will see, for example, here, uh, it's processed via the signal service kit and going through a couple of unnamed uh, methods. And of course, there's also some stuff with symbols here and before we again have something that is containing symbols. So it really depends what you will get in a backtrace, but it will help you to understand in which of all the uh, methods this message is being processed. And also something that you might have seen is that our backtracing script is causing a lot of delay because it's really a lot of calls. So the whole signal messenger is going to slow down. So I'm just interrupting the script here right now.